some passages I think we can meditate for the rest of our lives. And one of them is Philippians chapter 4. I would say uh, verse 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. I love this passage. Meditate on the good things. Um, I just always go back to the book of James, uh, the epistle of James, chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. If we just meditate on the things that the Lord has given us, on everything that's pure, everything that's lovely, I think we would see more the glory of God. I think we would see more the prophetic warnings, the prophetic um, guidance, the just, and how the Lord really opens a veil from our eyes when we just focus on him, when we just keep our eyes on the Lord. I'm reminded of Hebrews chapter 12, my go-to chapter. I just love this chapter. Verse um, 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Um, Romans chapter 5, verse... Um, Verses 1 to 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us every time i read that uh, passage i'm just reminded of just how i never would have thought in a million years that i would glory in my tribulations and my trials until I continued steadfast in the word until I continued to stay 
in Jesus until I continue to cling onto him and no one and nothing else. I see, I see it now how there is this beauty in being able to endure suffering, endure suffering. I am reminded of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13, the good old love chapter. Um, just love the word. The word is just such a beautiful thing for us to meditate on. It says in verse, um, let me read just verses one through seven. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. And love never fails. Verse 8. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I... I just recall in my earlier in my walk how I would just ask the Lord for more faith. I would need more faith, Lord. This I need more faith to sustain, to be able to fight these battles, to be able to fight hard. And the Lord was faithful. He gave an anxious child more patience. Um, and I'm just so grateful how the Lord knows our needs. We pray for one thing and the Lord hears us and he still will answer our prayers. But sometimes he will give us something better. Love is, um, love suffers long. And in other translations, it says love is patient. Love is patient. Um, but what's interesting is how we come to saving faith by faith. That's all we need, just a little bit of mustard seed of faith. And, and we, we receive the Lord, and then he, he imputes his love in us. He imputes himself, his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the comforter. So easy. Just We just need a little bit of faith, just believing in Jesus, and that's enough. But this whole thing of, like, how much faith do we have? Should we have a little bit or a lot? And... And when we try to, you know, when, when we see that we need more faith, of course, the Lord will give us what we're asking with pleasure because, of course, the Lord would will that we have more faith. Um, but he knows what we need at the given time. He knows that maybe in order for you to suffer long, you needed patience. You need patience. And I just love how he just gives us exactly what we need and much more. And so my prayer today is just that we continue to meditate on the things that are pure, on the things that are right, on the things that are just, on the things that come from the Father of lights and our Lord Jesus Christ. I am just so grateful. The Lord always wins every single battle. We think sometimes that he may be silent, but he's not. He has a plan. Everything's laid out and he always wins. So may we always be on his side. In Jesus name, I love you. Amen.